Okay guys, today I am going to change the fuel filter on this RV on a 2001 8.3 liter Cummins engine. Let me show you what the owner's manual says and then we're gonna go do it. It is a spin-on type fuel filter, so it's talking about draining some of the, the fluid out of it, basically so you don't spill it everywhere. And then after that, we're going to disconnect the electrical connector for the water in fuel sensor. And they have you removing the water in fuel sensor and testing it, making sure there's no cracks or anything in it, visible stuff. And then we're going to reuse it according to the owner's manual. As far as the port number, there's some port numbers for you guys. And again, this is off of a 2001 American coach made by Fleetwood. Uh, the engine is an 8.3 liter Cummins. So there's some numbers there. This FS0122, that is what I bought. And I noticed the one that I have here, here's your drain where you take some of the fuel out before changing the filter. Um, it has a new sensor in it. I don't know if that's the style connector that I have on mine, but um, I think I'm gonna have to change that. Important piece here, uh, as a do-it-yourselfer, I would think that you'd want to fill this filter up with fuel before you put it back on, but they're actually telling you in the owner's manual to not do that. It says the ISC engine has a self-priming low pressure system that purges the air from the fuel system. Do not pre-fill the fuel filter. Pre-filling the fuel filter can cause fuel pump damage. Uh, last tip here, guys, would be it says um, mechanical over tightening can distort the threads as well as damage the filter element seal or filter cartridge. So yeah, we want to be careful not over tightening it. Um, one other piece I was kind of looking for here, you know, you see there's a, a gasket for the filter, but in the, in the kit or in the package, it came with another gasket. So I'm really not sure where that goes yet. Um, we'll see as we go. Anything else? This would be after the procedure. Turn the key to the run position, but do not attempt to start the engine for 30 seconds. The electric fuel transfer pump will run and purge air from the system for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, attempt to start the engine. If the engine does not start, turn the key to the off position for 30 seconds. Allow the ECU to power down. Turn the key to the on, so another 30 seconds. So basically purging it. Some good tips there, man. Um, turning the key on, runs the pump, it'll purge the system. If the engine cranks for 30 without starting, vent the fuel supply lines. To vent the fuel supply lines, loosen the banjo fitting on the fuel pump inlet. Run the electric transfer pump until the air has been bled. Tighten the fitting, operate the engine. All right, so some good stuff there. All right, let's go do it. All right, this is the view from the bottom of the engine. Um, there's that pump that we changed the seals on. You guys can look for a video on that. Uh, the oil pan is just to my left here. And uh, there's your starter motor. And then just above the starter, you can see that filter. And um, just looking at that connector for the water in fuel sensor, looks like we'll be able to uh, not have to change it that's cool but that is my filter um, so getting my hand up there either from down below or maybe from the side of course we don't want to be laying below it there'll be diesel fuel coming out of there all right hopefully I got my camera out of the way of this diesel fuel um, that valve right there to the left, we need to loosen that first to drain some fuel out of the, the fuel filter. It said for about five seconds. I need a little bucket here to catch the fuel so I'm not draining it onto the ground. Pretty straightforward. That said five seconds. I don't see why I can't just 
keep it draining unless that creates some kind of a vacuum. And pulls, you know, fuel from the tank. I don't think so. All right, that's long enough, just in case. Let's put that back on. All right, next thing we want to do, disconnect the electrical connection on the filter. Just a standard connector. Right. So I can let you guys see that what it looks like. So all I did was I reached in and I opened that, lifted that tab, and then released that connector. That's a standard weather seal, weather pack connector, weather type connector that they use, man, on all of our cars. That looks like actually a a, a coolant sensor connector. Uh, just as a point of reference for you car guys. All right, so I'll see if I can spin this off from here. I don't know that I can. I can kind of move it. I need to get another hand on it from up top. Yeah, that's, that's working better. I'm gonna... I'm going, I'm going to bring you guys up top with me. All right, this is the top view here, guys. There's the frame right here, and there's the engine behind us. I can actually get a, a better hand on it here. And I'm uh, spinning that off right now. I want to be careful I don't drop it. Not that it really matters, but I don't want all this fuel going everywhere, and I don't want to drop it onto the starter. There is a... A battery positive feed right on the starter that's hot all the time. The last thing I want to do is arc this on the filter. Say from that, I just dropped it. I got it though. From the um, starter battery post to the frame. Not that that would happen, but you know, just being careful, being cautious. There's our filter, our FS1022. And I am looking for that second gasket. I still don't see it. All right, as far as this part, I could save this fuel, but I don't really want any of this fuel that was in this filter. So we could have saved that, but... And I, I really think we could have dumped that back into the filter. As long as we're not starting the engine up, we turn the key on, let it purge the system, I think it would have been fine. Because if you think about it, when you turn the the key off or the engine off this filter maintains there was fluid in it so I'm not really sure about that caution I think if if you would have um, cycled the key like it says we'd have been fine but whatever we're following the instructions the way it is and uh, I don't see that other gasket and that is this one right here maybe it's for another style another unit I'm not sure Let's look up inside. My only other thought would have been if there's another gasket, it would be up in here. There definitely is not a gasket there. Just the one outside one. I don't know. Not sure what that extra gasket's for. All right, guys. Before I put this new fuel filter on, we're going to lubricate the O-ring. I'm just using... Uh, some 5W20 motor oil that I had sitting around. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna wipe that around the O-ring. And if you're like me, guys, you know, the reason we're doing this, you buy this old coach, that this thing's from 2001. I don't know when these parts were replaced last. I'm not taking a, a trip with my family all those miles and not, and having a chance of anything. So the maintenance stuff, it all needs to be done. Um, as far as tightness of this filter goes, this is pretty standard. Um, even if they gave you a torque spec, it's not like I'm going to 
it's not like I'm going to torque it. I don't have a torque wrench that would fit this thing. So I'm gonna tighten it like I do every other oil filter. And I, I don't wanna say as tight as you can by hand because that's gonna be different for everyone. Um, I know myself, if I tighten this as, as tight as I can by hand, I will never get it back off without a wrench. So I, I'm gonna go tight, but not, not super tight. Now I definitely don't wanna have a fuel leak, that's for sure. All right, I'm going underneath again to finish tightening that. I'll just keep you guys right there. Just grabbing the filter from the bottom. I lied. I tightened that as pretty much as tight as I could with my hand. All right, last thing is we're going to uh, plug our fuel or water in fuel sensor. It's nice I didn't have to transfer it. It's a new sensor. That's it, last part of this particular job is going to be to turn the key on and do what it said, start it up, make sure we have no leaks. And for those of you that want the info, it's actually right on the side of the fuel filter. They're telling you not to pre-fill it on an ISC engine, which this one is. They're telling you to lubricate the O-ring, seat it. Once it's seated, you go a half turn more and then plug in the electrical connection. And this is the, the drain part, to drain it. They're telling you to uh, do that. We don't have to worry about this. To drain, turn, drain for 10 seconds. To, oh, okay, I guess maybe the drain is there. Um, in case you do have water and you can actually drain the water out, water would be heavier. That's pretty cool. Um, I didn't see anywhere in a maintenance procedure that it had you draining the water out, but um, I guess in a pinch, you can do that, so that's cool. All right, we're inside now. We're gonna do the key cycle thing, and that's 30 seconds, we turn the key on, and um, what I'll do for this part, I'll turn the key on, you hear the beeping, it's a, a warning buzzer, and we don't wanna listen to that for 30 seconds, so I'll chop this part, and, and uh, we'll start it up and go back and check for leaks, okay? There's key on, we'll give it 30. All right, uh, what you just missed, because I was talking to myself without hitting record, is the first time I did this, it stalled. And um, no big deal, it just, it started, ran fine for a few seconds, installed. And um, again, no big deal, because system's full of air, so I shut it off, waited for you know, 10, 15 seconds or so to allow the computer to power down, turn the key back on and you want that to happen you need to power the computer down to reinitiate this prime of the pump um, so power the computer down turn the key back on for another 30 seconds fired it right up a little bit of a hiccup when it first started totally normal systems full of air uh, for that and it's running great so let's go back and check for a leak now A little bit of comedy there. I think I'll leave it. Um, when the air brakes system hits about 120 psi, it, the governor press was recent. It does a little blow off, and I scared the crap out of me. You saw the camera shake. Um, then I pointed to the uh, pump that we replaced the seals on. Gave you the thumbs up. It's not leaking. Um, and then uh, no leaks, of course. And no leaks, of course, on the fuel filter, so that's great. Uh, last comment for this is according to the service manual, this should be done every 15,000 miles. So uh, my mileage right now, 
44,414. So this will be for me for later. I could write it down or I can go back to YouTube, watch my video, and see when the last time I changed my fuel filter. So again, I'm at 44,414. 15,000 miles from now is when I need to change this again. So, um, yeah, this will be twofold for whoever I sell this to down the road. You guys can watch the videos and see how I maintained your RV for you. But um, for the rest of you, the do it yourself type stuff for this kind of thing, really important to be able to do. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.